But I'll hand over to you. Let's get started and, and uh, have a look at the, the system. I know you can tell us a little bit about the, the, the how, it, how it works and what it is before we can delve into the program and look at the look at the live markets. Yes, yeah, sure, Simon. And if there's any questions come uh, in, please then just uh, feel free to disturb my disturb uh, my flow, should I say, and uh, uh, let's try and answer and make it as interactive as we can. Uh, okay. First thing that I have to say uh, is uh, welcome to everyone. I, I'm, I'm very, very proud to be here. I've been at a lot of these with Simon, so thanks very much for having us again, Simon. So, uh, uh, VectorDest is um, uh, authorized uh, by the FCA. Uh, I think we're pretty much the only uh, education and software provider in the UK that's fully authorized by the regulator. Uh, although I'm qualified to give financial advice, I'm not allowed to give financial advice in the absence of sitting down with everybody and uh, going through a very long and a detailed fact find, the sort of thing that your financial advisor would have done with you. I'm allowed to say what I'm doing myself, and um, uh, but I have to say that uh, although the shares that I'm holding are fine for my speculative purposes. They may not be suitable for you. Uh, so that said, uh, I can move on uh, and um, uh, talk about the VectorVest system and what we're going to try and do. So uh, I've got four topics today. Uh, the VectorVest system itself, uh, all about market timing, and then I'm going to talk about uh, trading price and earnings momentum. Many people, uh, technical traders, will be talking about trading price momentum only, but at VectorVest, our edge is to actually trade uh, both price and earnings momentum, putting together the technical picture with the fundamental picture of the, of, of the particular company. And then afterwards, the secret to success. That's right at the tail end, all right. So uh, uh, my own particular strategy it's hardly unique. Uh, it was motivated by uh, my reading on what Soros did in the quantum fund over many, many years. And uh, those of you that have followed George Soros will know that in the quantum fund, uh, he produced a return of well in excess of 30% a year for 30 years uh, running. Uh, and um, uh, he did two things. Largely, he split his money up into the old 80-20 and 20% uh, of his cash he used for leverage trading and forex indices uh, and uh, in shares. Uh, and that's where he broke the pound in 19 whenever it was uh, in the forex market. So, And with the money he made from that and with the free cash flow that he made from that, uh, he built up a stable of high growth companies. Now, uh, I use, uh, I leverage trade, uh, as I say, I've got a position uh, at the minute in gold, uh, we shall see. Uh, I have uh, various positions that I'm taking uh, uh, via spread bet in, uh, in gold mining shares and in copper shares. Uh, and uh, the money that I make out of that, that I put into uh, a stable of high growth companies using the vector best product, and that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, my best uh, investment over the last few years has been JD Sports, uh, and uh, I'm up five, nearly six X in that, and I've added to the position, I think, about eight or nine times along the way. Uh, so, And there's been lots and lots of uh, shares like that over the last couple of years. We'll talk about them a little bit later. But that's my own particular strategy. Uh, to make this work for you, whether you're in Bitcoin or whether you're in the stock market or whether you're in the forex market, uh, you need four things. These four characteristics were taught to me in my first job uh, on selfishness, determination, courage, and cheerfulness in adversity. When you run into drawdown, and it's going to happen to us all. Drawdown is where you have three or four bad trades in a row, and uh, it puts you in an interesting position. Is anybody in the Group not experienced drawdown. Okay, it's you just need to laugh at it. Uh, so, um, so after a day like Simon's day, if you listen to everything, uh, that's where you're going to be. <laughs> so, what I want to try and do is to uh, give you one fairly simple little system that you can apply that will make you money that I've tested and tested and tested over the years, uh, and. Um, uh, what I want to try and motivate is perfect execution 
of a relatively simple idea. And I quote Bruce Lee here, uh, I fear not the man who's practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who's practiced one kick 10,000 times. Uh, getting yourself to a point where you can execute a simple little trading plan over and over and over again without fear or hesitation is quite something. Okay. Uh, uh, to get yourself to a point where you can bypass the maze of techniques and get yourself to the money. Certainly in the uh, share market, uh, an hour a day should be more than ample. And in fact, even in my uh, leverage trading, I, I do most of my leverage trading on daily charts and, and particular four hour charts. And I rarely look at them for much more than half an hour a day. Uh, and uh, uh, put my stop losses in place, pull my stop losses up behind me. I've already pulled my stop loss in that gold position up to entry this morning. I tweeted about that earlier. Uh, so, um, And I'm doing my best to try and tweet all my positions. And in the uh, VectorVest blog at the weekend, uh, I talk about all my own leverage positions as well. So I'm doing my best to try and walk the talk. Everything is time stamped. Uh, and um, uh, you can see everything that I'm doing there. Uh, although and I have to make the comment, although it may be suitable for me, uh, they may not be suitable for you. Okay, so uh, I think that uh, I did my first course, uh, my first paid course in technical analysis in 1985. I put on my first trade in October 1982. Um, 1985, I was in the US uh, on a business trip. Uh, and uh, I managed to sandwich in a course uh, by George Lane, who was the founder of the Stochastic Indicator. Those of you that are technicians, I'm sure will have uh, done work with the Stochastic Indicator. We did three days with George in his trading room in the Midwest, and old George always used to say, that the objective of trading is to have enough money to trade tomorrow, so uh, you need to manage your money well, uh, risk one or two percent of your account in any one trade. Uh, that said, uh, the vector best edge, ladies and gentlemen, uh, is that we combine the fundamental position of a company, and by the fundamental position of a company, I define fundamental analysis as the search for the true value of a share. Uh, and at VectorVest, we recommend that you trade in shares that are trading below their valuation and every evening VectorVest calculates a value for every share in the London stock market. So you can see at a glance whether that share is overvalued or undervalued and certainly you don't have to look at it, you can do a quick search uh, and that will give you a list of all the shares that are trading below their VectorVest valuation. In my longer term trading, uh, my investment account, I look for a buffer of 20%. I know it's conservative, okay? Uh, I have a, 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 a vision to manage money professionally, uh, and uh, if you manage money professionally, which I've done in the past, the last thing you want is surprises. You'll find that everybody will tell you that they understand risk when you sign them up, but you'll find very quickly that after one month, if there's any red on the uh, statement, that not as many people understand risk as they thought they did. So um, uh, I like to look for a share that's trading 20% below the vector-based valuation, uh, and uh, there's lots of those on the London stock market at the moment. The second part of the vector-based edge is the technical position of a share, and I define the technical position as the study of trends and turning points. So and then the technical position of the overall market. Similarly, the study of the trend and the turning points of the overall market. And at VectorBest, folks, simply we're looking for a share that's undervalued, that's growing its earnings aggressively, reasonably safely, that's rising, and we want to buy, buy the darn thing when the general market is rising. And I hope that makes intuitive sense to you. And ladies and gentlemen, we're all three are saying yes. 
and when you can tick all those boxes, and I'm going to break those boxes down into subcategories towards the end of the presentation, when you can tick all of those boxes, then you can determine the future with a certainty that's unusual for this line of work. And much more important than being right is that we should make lots more money when we're right than we lose when we're wrong and that's what the Americans call asymmetrical risk to reward ratio uh, and uh, simply it just means making more money when you're right than you lose when you're wrong. Uh, there are three things that make money in trading and these things together are put together into a big word called expectancy which was first, first printed or written about by uh, an American psychologist called Van K. Thorpe and uh, he uh, says that the amount of money that you make is a function of the hit rate, the number of times that you get this right out of 10, let's say, the risk to reward ratio, and commissions. And out of all those three, the most important, certainly to my success, has been the risk to reward ratio. Uh, and that largely is a function of setting allowing the share just to move your way without snapping at profits and uh, when we get to the end of the presentation that's a big part of that secret that I talked about. Those of you that haven't read Reminiscence of a Stock Operator, for God's sake don't ask me how to spell Reminiscence, um, are missing a great piece of work. It's a hundred years old and old Jesse Livermore who's the hero, he's called Larry Livingston in the book, um, of the book, he says that those men, it was a chauvinistic age, those men that can be right and sit are uncommon. And then later on in the book, he says that the money's made by the sitting, not by the thinking. Wow, what a line. Okay, and uh, it's so easy to be right on a trade and you buy the share at 10 pounds and it goes to 10 pounds 50 and you snap at your profits. Okay, uh, so uh, sitting is a big, big part of the exercise and it's not easy because if you've sat in the past and the market snapped away your cash, then uh, very, di very, very difficult to sit the, the, the trade after that, okay? And that's a, f a function of presence and focus uh, that we all have to work at to be successful in this line of work. So that's the vector-based edge. Now, are there any questions about that edge uh, from anybody before I can, uh, before I move on? David, I don't think there's any questions at the moment. They're Good. Questions that's great. Right. That's great. Right. Might jump back in. All right. Uh, so uh, I always run out of time. Uh, uh, so uh, I'm just putting our little uh, offer up at the start. Uh, I'm more than happy to let everybody, anybody, test VectorVest for five weeks. Uh, that's a, a full uh, working uh, VectorVest UK and VectorVest USA. Uh, it's uh, five pounds ninety-five for that. It includes my quick start course. It includes all the training material. Uh, VectorVest is then forty-four pounds a month on a month-by-month -month basis, and my guarantee to you is that if you cannot make money with it, you can stop it at any time. All right. Uh, so uh, uh, that's my offer and I'm getting that in at the outset because I always run out of time. So uh, the three cornerstones of VectorVest, uh, ladies and gentlemen. What's a share really worth? My dear grandfather taught me a long, long time ago that the only way to make money in anything is to find the value of something and pay less for it. Okay. As simple as that. Uh, how safe is the earning stream? Those two are fundamental measures of the company. And then some idea about should we be buying this, should we be holding on to it, or should we be running for cover, which are technical measures of both the share and the overall market. So in VectorVest, folks, the program is unique in that it puts together earnings momentum, earnings safety, and the trend of the market together, the trend of the particular share together. So that's what makes VectorVest unique. It's an incredibly powerful edge in the marketplace. So first is value. Uh, as I said earlier on, VectorVest puts a value to every share in the market every single evening. And uh, 
when we get into VectorBest in a moment, I'll, I'll show you how you can download a little, little book uh, written by the founder of VectorVest, Dr. Bart Delito, uh, of how he goes about putting that value. It's fully revealed in uh, chapter three of his book, uh, Stock Strategies and Common Sense. So you can see at an eyeball, or you can test for those shares that are trading below their vector best valuation. And as I said, I like a 20% buffer, although I am conservative. I'm not conservative with that 20% that I uh, leverage trade, but I am conservative with the 80%. Uh, I want uh, to be in shares that are trading below the vector vest valuation. A very good example of a share that wasn't trading below the vector vest valuation was Imagination Technologies, and the damn thing fell to the vector vest valuation in the morning, and it would have turned 100,000 pounds into 38,000 pounds in a microsecond. So, uh, uh, and I don't need that in my life, thank you. I don't need that. A, very, a much more important measure of value is called relative value. And as the slide says, the relative value is a measure of the long-term price appreciation potential of the company. By long-term, read three years. And it's in relative to the risk-free rate, which at VectorVest we use a treble A rated corporate bond rate. So what the program does is that it estimates earnings for each company on the LSE and AIM over the next three years. It assumes that those earnings will be fully discounted to the price that sometime over the next three years works out what the price will be. It takes the projected price, subtracts the price today to work out the upside, and divides that upside by what a treble A rated corporate bond rate will pay, and the resultant is relative value. If your share has a relative value of 1.3, that means that we believe the share will outperform the risk-free rate by 30% over a window of three years into the future. Anything above 1.3, VectorVest reckon, is excellent. I think it's the most important number on VectorVest. It drives the share price. We'll look at it in the program in a second. Relative safety measures the consistency and the predictability of of the financial performance. So we look at the balance sheet, the income statement, the cash flow statement, sales, gobble them all up, buy that data from Thomson Reuters, and spit out one number on a scale between zero and two, which in fact uh, summarizes the financial performance. Above 1.3, that's excellent. Above one, okay. Below one, there have been ups and downs in this in these financial performance uh, over the last few years. If you're conservative, then this is a really important number, and you would want that number to be high, above 1.2, 1.25, and that will remove an awful lot of stop losses and anxiety. However, you're going to miss out on some of the more juicy returns. Uh, so, uh, if I was managing money for anybody else uh, rather than myself, I would probably only look at shares with a relative safety above 1.2. You don't need mistakes when you're managing money for somebody else. Uh, with my own money, I'm happier to move that down. And uh, CAS that I'm looking at at the moment, a uh, mining company, has got a relative safety of 0.97, which is quite typical for a mining company. Okay. Uh, so, uh, relative timing measures the trend on a scale between zero and two, and then what Bartolito did was he put all three things together into the master indicator, value, safety, and trend. And for the very first time, I saw one number, which in fact incorporates both fundamentals, relative value and relative safety, and relative timing, a technical measure of the share, into the one single number. I'd never seen that before. And that's what, uh, why I got involved with VectorVest six or seven years ago. Uh, this one number combines both fundamental and technical analysis. I didn't think it could have been done. Uh, VectorVest puts a stop loss to every share every single evening, loosely based around a 13-week moving average, but it's adjusted for the fundamentals of the share. If the fundamentals are good, we widen the stop loss. Give the share more wiggle room. And we put a buy, sell, 
or a hold criteria to every share every single evening. Uh, certainly, a share moving from hold to buy can be used as a very useful entry point. Uh, but one of the biggest uses of the buy-sell ratio is to determine the breadth of the overall market. And the buy-sell ratio is maintained on a daily basis as VectorVest's proprietary measure of market breadth. And if you are a technician, you really can't do too much work on market breadth. And you'll be glad to hear that that's the definitions over. So let me go into the program now. And here we go. There is the front page of VectorVest. Uh, when you uh, start your five-week trial, the best place to go is the welcome page. That's Dr. Bartolino himself. Uh, there's a video to play, and that's Dr. Dido's little book, Stock Strategies and Common Sense, that you can download. And as I say, uh, the mathematics, if you're quantitatively orientated, the mathematics behind value, relative value, and relative safety are fully revealed in that little book. Okay? Uh, we have a call center in North Carolina. Uh, it's open 12 hours a day. Uh, if you go to vectorvest.co.uk, you'll get the number. Uh, and uh, it's a free call and you can chat to those guys uh, for as long and as often as you wish. Uh, and uh, there is a, a free 15-minute getting started session provide for everybody who starts. Under training, uh, that's my five-week course, uh, and it could be done in five days if you've got the stomach for it, but a great deal of information, both on VectorVest and both on the general market itself. But let's go to the front page. Now, the front page can be daunting the first time you see it, folks, because it's designed so that you've got everything you need at the one glance. Uh, I'm more than happy to admit that the first time you see it, there's so much information that your mind just stops. Uh, and this is really useful because uh, we've got some really sexy apps that fit on the uh, iPhone and fit on the uh, Samsung phone uh, so that you can actually keep the market uh, under control while you're on the go. So no excuse anymore. Uh, we spend half our lives with our face stuck into a phone. In fact, more than half our lives with a face stuck into a phone. So uh, it's all on the phone these days. I just want to go to the shares themselves uh, to start with. So uh, when you go into this for the first time, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to find that this spreadsheet is empty. Uh, and you just need to click on Stock Viewer, and that will populate the spreadsheet. Uh, and uh, there's we're in the London market, we're following 2,172 shares, and I've just loaded the top 50 uh, along with the internet here at our office. Uh, in St. Paul's is really good. Uh, sometimes it isn't, and sometimes if the computer is actually doing all these calculations for all 2,172 companies, the sound quality uh, on uh, go to webinar goes down, although I haven't had that issue in a while. So I'm just going to take this to the left-hand side so we've got a full screen. Morgan Sindel uh, is a share that I'm holding. It may not be suitable for you, but I'm holding it. Um, it's uh, trading at £12.92. The first proprietary number is our valuation, and VectorVest believes the company's worth £17.73. So uh, hello, uh, I haven't got a calculator here, I think there's more than 20% in that. So it's it's trading below the vector base valuation. Down 12 pence yesterday on a fairly negative day, uh, which was uh, nearly 1%. Clearly these numbers are, you can get those from the evening standard for free. Now the next proprietary number is relative value. And as relative value as a measure of the earnings upside over a window of three years into the future in relation to the risk-free rate. Uh, which is a treble A rated corporate bond at 1.57, above 1.3 is good, above one, at 1.57 there's only two words for that and that's bloody marvellous. Uh, that's a really, really good number. It drives the share price. Uh, relative safety, 1.33 on a scale between 0 and 2, this is excellent, that's saying that all the financial ratios are getting better and this is a company making lots and lots and lots of money. Uh, and I'm no accountant, but uh, when you actually uh, go to the um, annuals and the interims, you can really smell the money coming from the, the reports. RT at 1.54 on the scale between 0 and 2 says the trend is strong here, and we've put those all together. 
Uh, it's got the highest VST in the pack. They're put together by the sum of the squares, ladies and gentlemen. So square that, square that, square that, add them up and take the square root, and that's the VST. Okay. It's on a buy recommendation. Now, the buy recommendation is largely a trend-following signal. The only fundamental input for a buy is that the VST has got to be greater than 1. The stop loss is 11.50. That's our stop loss. And we believe it's going to grow earnings at 27% next year. Now, these numbers to the right-hand side are our best shot at the future, ladies and gentlemen, so that if you look at the FT, you're going to see different numbers. The FT are looking back, vector best uh, looking forward. That's our best shot at the future. The future is a very slippery commodity, uh, but if the RS is high, then uh, our attempts at predicting the future are incredibly accurate. Share pays a dividend of 2.7%. Okay, and that's really, really good. All right, so uh, now what I can do now is that I can right click and I can pull up a full stock analysis report. Hope the internet is good. Yeah, we go. Uh, and for every share in the marketplace, we have this full report. We've got some very good charting I'll pull up in a second. This is just summary charting. Uh, it's on a buy recommendation. Green is good. Those of you that are colorblind, well, I, I don't know what I can do for you, but green is good. Uh, uh, RV is excellent, RS is excellent, timing is excellent, and all those things that I talked about, VectorVest talk you through the whole thing, okay, right down to sales and margins, and there's that report is available for every share in the marketplace, okay. Uh, if I right click again, I can go to View Stock News. I hope I can. And that will take us to the FT. This is a paid subscription, which is a part of your VectorVest membership. And pretty much everything that's ever been written on this company is here, uh, including uh, director's dealings, all the financials going back for the last 10 years, uh, and pretty much everything that's ever been written. So if you want to do some detailed research outside VectorVest, which quite honestly I don't do a great deal of, then it's all there. And uh, on uh, VectorVest we've actually got the choice of the FT for our data, Reuters for our data, or Google, or not Google, Yahoo for our data, which I believe, which is quite rubbish actually compared to the other two. I default mine uh, to uh, the Financial Times. And if I right click again, uh, lots of things that you can do while right clicking. This is just the uh, three. I can pull up a chart. And there's the chart. Okay. Uh, that's the chart of Morgan Sindel over the last year. Uh, the green is our buy recommendation. Okay. That's our buy recommendation. The last buy recommendation came in just about here. And as you can see, that little uh, horizontal line, that's, that's my entry point after this uh, cup and handle formation here, and it's going up the page ever since. So I can put on value. There's the vector based valuation. Uh, uh, maybe a little bit bigger. And earnings per share. I make that a little bit bigger so you can all see it. And that's my standard layout, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, okay, that's my standard layout. I like to see earnings per share rising. And although it's anecdotal, I found that the smoother the earnings per share rises, the easier goes the trading. And over the last year, you can see that earnings per share has gone up from uh, 60p to a pound. That's good, nearly doubled. Uh, the share has broken out, uh, and I like to see a share that's undervalued by 20% that is breaking new highs, and I've got to search for that. That's on a buy recommendation, and when I see a share that's undervalued, uh, on a uh, that's breaking new highs on a buy recommendation, then uh, that's a really good place to be. Now, this, uh, if you want to go back on my blog, uh, I did an interview on Tip TV, and uh, Jenny Hammond was uh, in the chair, and at the end of the interview, she asked me which one of my selections I believed was going to be the best trade, and uh, I, I mentioned to her that I felt 
uh, that Morgan Sindel was the place to be right here at eight pounds and it's up 50 percent uh, since all right so a lot of that is the general market I'm more than happy to admit uh, but uh, and we haven't looked at the general market yet but that that's a very simply and I added to the position just here those of you that are technicians uh, will see that uh, uh, when you get a little continuation pattern like this uh, that invariably uh, is a great place to get aboard. Uh, that's a falling wedge, uh, and when it broke up out of the falling wedge, then that was pretty much a no-brainer that that was going to move up the page. So here we had a cup and handle formation, and there we had a falling uh, wedge formation. So those of you that are technical analysts, here is my guarantee to you. When you take some very simple TA patterns, and you incorporate that into undervalued shares that are growing their earnings aggressively and safely, my word, you can make money as a, a short-term trader if you wish. Those of you that struggle with patterns, you don't need the patterns to make money. I think, however, if you, if you want to be a swing trader over uh, a couple of weeks, in other words, take that little move, take that little move, uh, then uh, I think that a knowledge of the patterns is wonderful. I love the patterns, I really do, and uh, those of you that know my work well will know that uh, I get really excited about Fibonacci patterns, uh, such as the Gartleys and the butterflies. Uh, so, But that, that uh, pattern, this cup and handle pattern, was taught to me by William O'Neill uh, some oh, 35 years ago. I wrote a wonderful book called How to Make Money in Commodities. Uh, I was so captivated by the book that I went to New York City to meet him, in fact. Uh, anybody read How to Make Money in Stocks by William James O'Neill? Uh, wonderful book, very difficult to do because uh, you've got to keep the fundamentals up to date by hand and I, I tried and I failed and uh, now with VectorVest, VectorVest does all the heavy lifting of working on value uh, and uh, earnings per share growth. So that's the basic VectorVest system. Share breaking up new highs uh, where the fundamentals are pristine that move into a, a buy signal. And the only thing we now have to think of, ladies and gentlemen, is what is the general market doing? Because the general market is 80% of the exercise. Remember. The first tick of the box is fundamentals. Morgan Sindel ticks all those boxes. Two, is the share trending upwards? Well, it broke up through a new high here, which was good on a buy recommendation, which was good. And the third tick of the box is what's the general market doing? And that's what we're going to try and ascertain now or at least in a second. Uh, let's have a look at another share uh, that I'm holding. I'm holding Caledonian Investments. I'm holding Coates. Done well in Coates, uh, and uh, this is Coates. This is a very, very old company. I can remember my grandmother uh, uh, sewing with a Coates spool of thread. I remember vividly the the because uh, we used to as kids, we used to um, uh, take the uh, little uh, old. Uh, wooden things that the, the um, thread was wound on and uh, make a, a little gadget that was driven by an elastic band. Did anybody else ever make one of those when you were a youngster? Uh, so it first came on to my uh, watch list somewhere around here because uh, it at this point the value and the price were separated by 20%. And that's, that's the buffer that I'm looking for. The very first buy signal was here. I didn't get that one. I don't know why. But I bought into it just here as it broke up. And that was at about 42, 43p. Uh, and uh, it went up the page. Then went sideways for a little while. And it went to hold. And hold means hold. OK, hold means hold. Uh, it went to hold, uh, and then all of a sudden it went to a buy again, and then I added to the position just here. OK, so I added, I've just added to this position once, and I'm still holding it because it's still on a buy, moving up the page. And it's broken out of this little flaggish type uh, pattern here, and I, I think that this is heading towards 90p. Uh, so that, that's been a very good investment. So uh, that was the first signal. I, I actually missed, but when it broke up through this old high here, it was on a buy recommendation. I thought that was a really good place to get in, and held it through this, added there, and that's what I've been doing. 
simple as that. Uh, so that's two shares that I'm uh, that I'm holding. Uh, Let's look uh, at uh, something else that I'm holding. Uh, oh, I'm not holding countryside properties, but I'm interested. Uh, and I, I, I need to make some money available for this share. Uh, there is the share. Now, I, I should have bought into it down here. There's Look at earnings per share. Earnings per share is moving up from the bottom left to the top right. It's sitting in a range significantly undervalued, and it goes to a buy recommendation just here. Should have been bought at 250, but I didn't have any money. Every I was fully invested, didn't have any cash left. Clearly, that's never happened to anybody else in our room, Simon. They have all loads of the stuff, but uh, I, I was fully invested there, and I didn't have any cash. Uh, so, um, But it's broken up again, and you can see this little flag. Uh, folks, you see that little flag? What do the technicians think of that? That's what my friend Thomas Bulkowski has written a wonderful book called The Encyclopedia of Chart Patterns. He would call that a tight flag. And it's broken out of that little flag and it's pushing its way up the page. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you don't have to uh, know anything about technical analysis to make a buck with vector vest, but when you've been studying it for 40 years, it's very difficult not to do this. Uh, the, the technicians in our midst would say that that distance has to be repeated, and if I add that line by eye, it's saying that this thing's going to get up to here somewhere. Okay, so I like the look of that. I haven't bought it yet, but I'm just about to. Uh, I, I've got a couple of shares uh, in the portfolio that uh, uh, seem to have stagnated, uh, and they've done well for me, but they've stagnated. Uh, I need to get out of them, and, and I think that that's got legs in it up the page. Okay, If we look at the fundamentals of the share, uh, it's uh, undervalued. It's got this whopping RV of 1.58. Uh, again, that's in bloody marvelous territory, and the relative safety at 1.19 is good, and it's on a buy recommendation. Vectivest believes it's going to grow its earnings by 30% next year, which on any scale is really good. Okay, pays a 2% dividend, and it's got a dividend growth of 23%, which is great. A dividend safety of 80 out of 100. These are pristine numbers, ladies and gentlemen. And so. Uh, do I know what's going to happen next? Of course, I don't know what's going to happen next. Nobody knows what's going to happen next, apart from the big fella upstairs. And to my knowledge, he doesn't trade. Uh, so I, I'm right. If I apply this and tick these boxes 80% of the time, 20% of the time I'm wrong. Getting your mind around thinking and probabilities is a big part of the exercise. OK. Uh, uh, but an 80-20 split is not bad as long as I tick the boxes. Now, the last tick of the box, now just remember that although I'm thinking of buying into this share, it may not be suitable for you. All right, let's put on uh, the, the stop loss. And if I put on the stop loss uh, in the share, uh, what have I done? Put on the RT, I'm getting thick. There's a stop loss down here. Now, I did a webcast yesterday, and there was a young man on the webcast who likes two to three day trades. Uh, the vector based stop loss is designed to keep you in the big move, to keep you in these moves. As you can see in this little pullback here, it didn't even smell the stop loss. All right, so uh, those of you that are two to three day swing traders, then I think you probably need to place your stop a little bit tighter, especially if you're trading these things with leverage. But if you are trading with leverage, you need to know more about your game and have that all written and tidied up. Uh, but the vector based stop loss designed to keep you in these big moves. So that's putting together the technical position of the share and the fundamental position of the share. And that's two boxes. And I've ticked those two boxes on uh, countryside properties. The next step is the overall market itself. Any questions on the fundamental position of a company and the technical position of a company? Mm. Any questions on that? Hi, David. Um, well, specifically, not maybe specifically on the fundamentals and the technicals, but if you've got time, we have four or five questions waiting. Um, First up would be from Pep, who says, uh, does, does VectorVest offer intraday charts as well? He uses another UK-based uh, portfolio management 
software. Um, no, it doesn't uh, offer intraday charts. Uh, it, it doesn't look at intraday prices at all. Uh, we base our uh, decisions on end, end of day charts. Okay. Um, how do you lock in your profits with using stop losses? Do you, do you trail stops or? Well, that, that's that's very much a philosophy. But uh, uh, one method would be trailing stop losses. Uh, the other methods would be either uh, targets. For example, I've, I can calculate a target from this move here up around 450 odd, well 425, and you could certainly take your profits into that 425. That would intimate a little bit of knowledge of technical analysis to do that. Um, other way of working out targets is through Fibonacci analysis, and uh, Sam and I cover all of that in my. Um, I do two webcasts a month, uh, two Vectorvest subscribers, and I cover mm -hmm. all of that in in those webcasts. I, I don't think I've got time to cover it today. But exits, ladies and gentlemen, are very, very much a, a personal philosophy. Are you going to take profits into strength? Or are you going to let the share run up the page and pull the stop loss up behind you? And that has to be a part of your unique trading plan, which is unique to you. I have many traders who risk a pound to make two pounds. Once, once they've made twice as much as they've risked, they get out and they move to the next one. I have traders who, in fact, um, uh, wait for three times what they've risked, uh, and they do exceptionally well. Uh, However, I think the people who make most money are the people who allow these shares with outstanding fundamentals just to run up the page. Those are the people that, and again I quote uh, Livermore, uh, 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 the money's made by the sitting, not by the thinking. I've never seen a share that's too high not to go higher, and unfortunately too low that's not to go lower. So many, many ways of locking in your profits. And uh, if I could answer that question just by uh, moving out and going to training. And in lesson number two, we have a full lesson on weed your portfolio. And that's all about exits. Exits when you're wrong and exits when you're right. So lesson number two deals with that in uh, a great deal of detail. OK. Uh, Okay, thank you for that. That helps. Now, the, the, the last thing that I have to, um, otherwise I'm going to run out of time, is um, the uh, how to time the market itself. And that's the last tick of the box. Uh, and uh, Vectorvest have been timing the market for a very long time uh, by rising shares and rising markets. And uh, those of you uh, that have got experience in shorting, you can sell falling shares and falling markets. And uh, we've been timing the market for a lifetime. We've got um, long-term systems uh, for uh, position traders. Uh, uh, for example, uh, like that 80% 80 of my cash is based on those longer-term systems. And we've got uh, timing systems for swing traders. Now, all of those systems are based on the vector vest composite. They are totally rule-based. There is no subjective input whatsoever. What is the vector-based composite? It is a very broad measure of the London market, which includes all 2,173 shares that we're following. And it's on an equally weighted basis. And uh, Dr. Bart DeLille firmly believes that uh, an equally weighted index represents the sentiment of the market much better than um, a uh, market cap weighted index like the FTSE 100. So we look at three things. We look at the price of the vector vest composite. We look at the breadth of the vector vest composite as measured by our proprietary buy-sell ratio. And we look at the momentum of the uh, vector vest composite. Now, uh, I've got all of this in PowerPoint, but it's always best. Uh, to do it in the program. So if I go now to the home page, and I now want to go to this box called timing. And if I click on market timing graph, I can pull up the vector based composite. And I can I want to pull it up uh, since the start of last year. There we go. Start of January. Uh, that's about 18 months ago. There we go. Oh, David. Uh, something like that. Now, 
as you can see, uh, the market has run up the page strongly. The vector vest composite started uh, after the lows in, in February at uh, 300. It's now at 407. Uh, so, and, and many people will say, well, that's because the pound has fallen. Nevertheless, uh, if you been sitting in cash, uh, you wouldn't have been able to have hedged that out. Uh, and now we have a little box down here, and the box has got one, two, three, four, five, six timing systems in it. Uh, from the shortest, which is the primary wave, to the longest, which is confirmed calls, and quite a few in between. So. Uh, confirm calls for buy and hold uh, for that 80% of my account I use it primary wave would be used for those people who won't be in the market over uh, two to three days and the DEW which I won't mention today is somewhere in between if I click on confirm calls this populates the uh, this populates the spread the the thing with these green and red arrows the red is the longest term sell signal and we got one of those at the start of 2016. In February we got a buy signal and that was on the 22nd of February and that buy signal was current right through Brexit to November. We then got that pullback in November and then from the 15th of December we've in an upswing which is still in place. Now if you are a position trader then these are incredibly important. When you see a uh, green up, then you need to be pretty much fully invested, folks. I think that you could use these to trade the index or a tracker uh, as well. Uh, when you see a red signal, well, you need to be careful. Uh, there are uh, three things primarily to do when you see a red signal. One, don't buy anymore. The market's falling. Two, watch your stop losses like a hawk. And uh, three, uh, look at the shares that you've got and uh, just weed out the laggards, those shares that in the last move up the page have done nothing. If they've done nothing in this move up the page, then there's not much chance of them doing something when the market is falling. Raise some cash for the next buying opportunity. That's what I do. Now, somebody mentioned exits. You could decide to run for cover when you see a red signal from the long-term system. You could decide to get into cash. That would have tax ramification for some people, uh, but nevertheless you could decide to get into cash, you could use that for an exit signal. Now, as you can see, markets don't go up uh, the page in a straight line, they go up the page in a series of uh, what Charles Dow called rising bottoms, and for that reason, VectorVest puts two uh, trends to the marketplace, but I always find that even if you're a short-term trader over two to three days, that it's always best to be long after a confirmed up and to be short after a confirmed down. So even for long-term traders these signals are incredibly important. Now if I go back to the front page of VectorVest uh, here and I go to home and just give this a little bit more screen space. That traffic light summarizes the short-term trend or inductive S speak the primary wave. And as you can see, the primary wave is pointing down. And Vectivest does not advocate buying stocks at this time. Now, we've got two measures of the trend on Vectivest, a short-term measure and a long-term measure. And today, that trend on vector vest is down up. Now that means the short term trend is down, the long term trend is up. Now this means, ladies and gentlemen, that you don't need to pull up that chart that I just pulled up. Now I love looking at charts. People keep telling me, David, can you scan for this? And I look at them with complete contempt and say, I don't want to scan for it, I want to look at the chart. I love looking at charts. Uh, but some people don't like looking at charts. So. Uh, uh, on your smartphone, um, you can simply have a look, and every day you'll see the position of the share. Uh, for two days, we were in an up up situation. Now, today we're down up. The um, short term trend is down, longer term trend is up, and we're on a confirmed up. And that confirmed up, this green thing, has been up since the 15th of December last year. 
Now, as soon as that turns to a confirmed down, i.e. one of those red triangles, then this will show in red, confirmed down. So you don't need to look at the charts at all. All this does is that it tabulates the price of the vector base composite, the momentum of the vector base composite, and the buy-sell ratios. Just, just the same as you would writing down the numbers in your diary. Uh, when the uh, price is down day over day and week over week, it color codes this as red, and red is not good. So today, Vectorvest does not advocate buying stocks at this time, and that's incredibly good advice. So let's go back to our charts. And let's go back to Morgan Sendo. What I can do now, ladies and gentlemen, is that I can actually go to the same little button and I can click on confirm calls. And what this does is that it puts on a green triangle, sorry, a red triangle and a green triangle onto the chart. Now, the red triangle and the green triangle are from the vector vest composite and have nothing to do with Morgan Sindel apart from the fact that Morgan Sindel is one of the 2,173 shares that reflect the index. So from this moment, from this day, which was the 15th of December, the general market is rising. A few days later, the, the fundamental position of Morgan Sindel is wonderful. A few, day, a few days later, then the uh, Morgan Sindel gives a buy signal. It breaks up through the old high, and the ball is in. The game is on. So on Morgan Sindel, on around this date, the fundamental position of the share is good. The technical position is good. It's on a buy, breaking up through new highs. And the general market is on a confirmed up. And we would have to wait for the little color guard to be in the green so that the short-term trend and the long-term trend are saying the same thing. If you tick all those boxes, guys, you get very, very lucky indeed. Just here, uh, when I got in here, uh, the, uh, I sort of added there, the uh, fundamentals were good. Or on a buy recommendation, the market was in the confirmed up, and just about here we got lots and lots of green in the color guard, and the little pointer was in the green. And Vectorvest said on the front page, Vectorvest advocates buying safe, undervalued shares that are rising in price at this time. And that's exactly what I did. So if you follow the rules, you get very, very lucky indeed. I, I, I'm very much a rules-based uh, uh, trader, uh, and uh, I'm good at ticking the boxes. In his book, Mark Douglas, um, uh, Trading in the Zone, Mark Douglas talks about uh, initially starting as a mechanical trader and then moving on to a more intuitively-based trader. And uh, I myself, in my investment account, haven't... Uh, been that successful in moving to that. When I stop picking the boxes, then my hit rate and performance goes down. Uh, so let's look at another share uh, uh, that I had. This is Coates. And Coates, again, let's put on the confirmed calls. And as you can see, see, see how important the market is, folks. See, as the, as the general market started to turn up, Coates breaks out of this little range that it's been in for a while. It's on a buy recommendation, and I can pretty much guarantee you that there, the primary wave was up. In other words, the little pointer was in the green. The short-term trend was up. The longer-term trend is up. It's on a confirmed up. Coates' fundamentals were great, and it's on a buy recommendation, and it's breaking through new highs. Bob's your uncle. Uh, similarly here, uh, buy recommendation. Fundamentals are great. On a confirmed up, and I can pretty much guarantee that the little pointer was in the green. You tick those boxes, you get very, very, very lucky at this. And uh, here are the boxes. Here are the boxes. Uh, and this is just a summary in case the internet went down. Uh, value divided by price greater than 1.2. RV is greater than 1.3. The bigger, the better. RS greater than 1. I like to see earnings per share above 15% and rising smoothly. 
the shares in a buy recommendation and breaking new highs, the markets were then a confirmed up, and the pointer on the color guard is in the green, and VectorVest advocates buying safe undervalued shares that are rising in price at this time. And that is my kick, and I've been practicing that kick for a very, very long time now. Uh, so, we finally move to the secret. Secret's very simple, folks. And this is based on many, 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 many trades and observations over hundreds and maybe thousands of traders. A loser invariably comes, becomes pessimistic when he or she has a winner. They become pessimistic as they feel the market's going to snatch away their profits and they end up snapping a small profit. A loser invariably becomes optimistic when he or she has a loser. They're sure that it's going to turn and thus allow a small loss to become a big loss. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is 95% of people who go anywhere near markets. That's how they think. So just be aware of your thoughts the next time you put a position on. Because the winner invariably becomes optimistic when in a winning trade and becomes very pessimistic when in a losing trade. And this allows these traders to let winners run and close losers quickly. A simple mind shift is all that it takes to print money. The first step is to become very aware of your thoughts in a position. If you're one of the 5%, then you're doing this already. If you're one of the 95%, then the first step to actually change and making any change is to become critically aware of your thoughts. I can recommend some books on it. Uh, it's, a, a, I think, a spiritual book by a guy called Eckhart Tolle, and I think you could do an awful lot worse than to have a long read at uh, Practicing the Power of Now, which will show you how to actually put, keep your mind in the present moment and become aware of your thoughts. So the VectorVest system, folks, all about trading both earnings momentum and price momentum. Uh, the price momentum of the share itself and price momentum of the overall market. Uh, and I'm, I'm more than happy to let anybody test it for five weeks for five pounds ninety five. After the five we after the five weeks it's forty four pounds a month uh, and there's no liability whatsoever. If you want to stop it after the five weeks you stop it. If you want to run it for a month and then you decide it's not for you then you can stop it at any time. Uh, Simon, any questions or have I run out of time once more? I'm afraid we are just about exactly out of time. Um, okay. We we need to hand over. We've got another speaker waiting, but I think we we've done very well. Thank you very much, David, for for coming along. Again, I put that link into the the chat box. Um, Olivia, that's a good question, maybe from Richard, just to finish on. Um, he says, "Are we in a go away in May? <laughs> Except it's June syndrome with the markets." Uh, well, the, 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 trend, the, trend, the trend is still up, but the trend looks very mature to me in that uh, the price um, of the VectorVest composite is rising, but unfortunately the buy-sell ratio is not coming to the party, and our market timing indicator is showing uh, a compound divergence. So, uh, And I didn't have time to look at the leading uh, characteristics of uh, the market timing indicator uh, in this presentation. But yes, the trend up the page is looking is looking mature. If you go onto the website uh, and uh, go to my blog, I did a Tip TV interview on this last Friday morning, and there's a nine-minute interview between myself and my dear friend Zach, which talks about that. So I, I think you would find that interesting. That'll answer that question exactly. Okay, David Paul, Managing Director of VectorVest here in the UK. Thank you very much um, again. I'm going to take the going to take the presenter role back from you now, if that's okay. Um, Th and again, we'll thank pull you, up Simon. As, Thanks as very do. much indeed. I appreciate it. You take yeah. care. Good. Thank Bye, you, everyone. Bye-bye.